Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth here. Today I wanted to look at the procurement life cycle. There's five steps in the procurement life cycle. The first is requirements. Then you've got vendor selection. Then you've got negotiation and contracting. Then you've got service delivery and the performance monitoring of the whole contract. Then you've got the renewal or the termination of the contract, contract closure at the end. Project managers don't get involved in all of those different steps in the life cycle, but we do get involved, well, we can be involved in all of them if necessary, um, but on the vast majority, I think, of projects where you've got other people working in a finance and procurement capacity in your business, you won't be involved in all of them. And so you'll end up with being involved probably in the earlier stages, in the requirements and in the vendor selection. So let's talk about those for a second. The requirements part of the project is uh, of a procurement engagement is really important because you need to know what it is that you're buying. So spending some time doing accurate requirements gathering so that you can really pitch and ask suppliers to put their proposals out to you um, is really important. You might well find that actually you're working with a business analyst who can help you with, the, with this step of the project, the requirements for the supplier. And if you can, then that's definitely a, uh, an advantage for you. You've got to start thinking about the intellectual property rights as well at this point. So it's not just a list of, I need a, a supplier who can do these five things. You've also got to think about what else you need beyond the actual deliverables. Do you need to buy the intellectual property of the output that you are creating? How are you going to write that in? Is that going to cost more? You've also got to think about your requirements for delivery dates, for example. Do you need to specify exactly when each of these delivery points needs to be so that you can make sure that anyone who's tendering for your work can meet those and deliver accordingly? I think you should. I think you should be looking at the sort of non-product um, non related requirements within the whole piece about making sure that you're um, putting your requirements together for your potential vendors. There might be other things you need to add into your requirements as well. Hardware specifications, security requirements. There might be, uh, if it's an IT project, latency, time, what your expectations are for the user interface, any government regulations or industry regulations that you're expecting requirements to be able to evidence that they comply with or build your solution in compliance with. You might want to say that there are audit requirements that they need to comply with. And it might be easy, easy things. Um, for example, uh, I once heard a story about somebody who done some, done, you know, submitted their requirements and procured a piece of equipment and then found that when it was delivered, it couldn't fit through the door because they'd forgotten to specify the size of the, uh, of the door and what they needed in order to be able to get the stuff delivered into the physical building. So there's all kinds of different requirements that you need to think about when you are putting together your um, information to go out to tender for the first part of your procurement life cycle. Documenting all of those, brainstorming as much as possible, involving the right people in helping with coming up with the requirements will give you a really full and valuable list of information that you can then use to um, uh, to, to put into a documentation that goes out to vendors. So be as specific as you can, be as precise as you can, think about as much as you can, leave it 24 hours, come back and think about it even more. And if you've got the specialist help of business analysis people or procurement people or finance people, then use them because um, this point of a project is certainly not something you should be doing in isolation by yourself. All right, I'll see you in my next video when we will be talking about the next part of the procurement lifecycle which is that vendor selection.